action. The one, the only. And the life of with Steve Stanulus. In the life of with Steve Stanulus. In the life of with Steve Stanulus. In the life of with Steve Stanulus. With Steve Stanios, I'm Steve Stanios. We again are at an amazing venue. We are at the DL, which is at the Lansing and Ludlow, which is probably one of the top spots in the Lower East Side, one of my favorite places tonight. I'm so grateful to be here. We have an amazing show tonight, and we're going to start right off the bat with a dear friend of mine who's a Sopranos regular, probably had one of the biggest whacks in the history of Sopranos, my dear friend John Bianco. Let's get it up for Johnny. That actually sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty fucking good, right? That was a nice little intro. It's actually really good. Yeah, I like that. What's going on? Well, you know, just a couple of things. I'm real happy to be on your show. Tonight. Yes, I've been trying to get you on since the inception. And, uh, since the inception. I've been trying to get you, and it's been a little tough. And, uh, you know, finally I'm here. We are here. Now, before we start a whole, I want to go through a whole series of things with you. Because, uh, you know, so a lot of people don't notice, we have a 20-year relationship. Not physically. But 20 year relationship. Because you and, got me uh, nervous. Right? Well, and my girlfriend may have something else to say. Well, I mean, you know, I, mean, I didn't want to come out on the air, but. Um, no pun intended. No pun intended. You didn't want to come out on the air. Exactly. <clears throat> um, about 20 years ago, uh, we both started dancing at Chippendales. And, uh, well, you were actually on the circuit, and I was just starting out. I was 18 years old. That's right. And Johnny was like already established. He had hair down to here. And, it was uh, actually down to here. It was actually down to here. It really was. And, uh, the first time I ever started dancing, the first time I was going to come out, or I was actually supposed to MC. Which, for right. everybody who don't know out there, what I'm seeing is, I was the guy on the microphone that was going to bring you through the whole show. So I was all nervous, and I had like an outfit on. I thought I looked good. So uh, as I was ready to go on a minute before, John goes to well, me, what did you say? So he's getting ready, you know, and uh, I got some of the guys in the background and stuff, and I said to one, you know, some of the guys, I go, uh, Watch, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch what I say to this guy. So he's looking in the mirror, he's looking good. I go, so, uh, so Steve, are you, uh, is that your outfit? Is that what you're going out with? Yeah. And uh, he looked at me like, w w what do you mean? Yeah, I'm ready. I go, oh, no, no, it's all right, all right. So, yeah, yeah, you look good. Go ahead, go ahead. It's good. No, fine, you're all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it, yeah. And he totally wrecked me because I'm like, why, you don't like what I'm wearing? <clears throat> and I, I didn't want to go out, remember? Yeah, that was great. So, yeah, so, so we've been, you know, we met like, 1990. Yeah, that's probably, yeah, it's like 23, 24, yeah, 23 years ago. 23 years ago, yeah. and uh, he danced under Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten, like a rotten app. Johnny, no, like, just <laughs> Johnny Rotten and I was Steve Savage. Johnny Rotten, yeah, because somebody, people, is it Johnny Rocket or is it Johnny Rotten? Right, it's Johnny Rotten. It's a Johnny Rotten, like, you know, like a rotten apple and, uh, you know, the guy from the Sex Pistols, but. Right, that's what everybody thinks know, as, of as, with Johnny as, Rotten. Uh, as, Bro, I'll probably be dating myself right now. Well, right? that's what I'm saying, as the years have gone on, people like, you know. Nobody knows who Johnny Rotten is. Who the fuck is, is Johnny Rotten? Exactly, exactly. So, so that was a, kind of a weird name. It was a weird name. I want to tell you that now. I didn't, back then, I thought it. I never said it to you. Yeah, it was a little. It wasn't really a sexy name. It was edgy. Yeah, but it's like, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Johnny Rotten. Yeah, but it was edgy. You know what I mean? It was like Johnny Long John or Johnny, yeah, and, 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 and Johnny the, Fox. The funny thing is, is like, I don't, you know, a, one of the guy that I danced with like maybe once or twice, uh, he just said, you know, one of the first times I danced, he goes, you know what, you should be called Johnny Rotten. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, what the hell, you know. Did you have a different name prior? No, that was it. it was just, I mean, did you come Johnny, out? Like, just Johnny, came out Johnny, I was gonna, I was going to be Stephen Lords. Stephen Lords. That's that it. was the name I picked. <laughs> <laughs> I sounded like a gay porn star. That's, that could be problems. Yeah, you could have some issues with that name. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, the guy's like, well, Steve Savage. I'm like, yes. That works. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. It worked. Because yeah, it was sexy, but savage. 23 years later. 23 days, I'm still fucking still milking Steve that shit. Steve Savage, yeah. More people know me as Steve Savage. That's, yeah. In fact, when I was well, a cop. People, you know, some of the guys that we're still friends with, some of the dancers. Yeah, you know, they, they got me on the phone. Johnny Rotten. You know? Right, right. When I was a cop, and people used to get pulled over, and they would say, I know Steve Savage. The cop would like, if you know him, what's his real name? Yeah, what's his real name? Well, that's, uh, yeah. You know, Steve Savage. I know it starts with an S. Something. Yeah, something Stan, like that. Sue, Stan, yeah, something. So, yeah. But yeah, so Johnny actually was, you know, when we were dancing, you were like one of my mentors, bro. 
Hey, yo, I mean, like, I when, well, when, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I was pretty, I was pretty fucking no, sexy. You, I no, was pretty good. No, know? I gotta be honest. No, listen. I, I mean, I still I look halfway be, listen, decent right now. But I, listen, you know. I gotta be honest. Like, you know, <laughs> Johnny had like, a lot of guys were like, um, either what had good physiques or were good looking but couldn't dance or weren't that great looking and could dance but didn't have good physiques. John, you know, you, you had the whole package. Yeah, I had that. No pun intended. You know. <laughs> Are you, like, trying to come out now? No, I don't know. No, no, it kind of works. Because I think I'm going to, like, shift over a bit. No, no, so... But, yeah, so that's how we met. Yeah. And then, uh, John, you're always actually in the whole acting thing, and, and yeah. I never really cared about it. Yeah. And then, um, you know, as time went on, I kind of got into it as well. And then we did our first short film, 1997. Was it 97? Yeah, 97. No, 2007. No, no, 2007. 97. Again, 2007. he's going back. Then. Right, and uh, Dick and Jane. Dick and Jane, that's right. And uh, we had a lot of fun on that. Yeah. You, you came to me with an idea. You wanted to do something bizarre. I did. With this guy, uh, you know, you wanted to do something, and then I wanted to turn in the story. Well, what happened was, we had, fr again, you know, we, it's edited so we could edit shit if we didn't <clears> like it. I had friends that... Also with dancers, but were fucking gay for pay, and and they would have. These well, people don't know these terms. <laughs> well, for, for all those gay, well, like, people that know what gay for pay is, it's basically is that? straight dudes that'll do things for money. And um, I had these two guys. That's pretty questionable. Two guys that we used to dance, real fucking big guys, and um, they would like people would pay them to do crazy shit, and like you know, one guy would. Paid, my friend was like, Byron. Byron. Byron, he was like 250 pounds jacked, and uh, this guy would pay him to step on his face. And it was, it was crazy. <laughs> and he would say, no, 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 but he would tell, no, no, listen, he would tell me all these crazy stories. And, uh, you know, all these crazy, and I wanted to do a movie based on all these crazy stories. Right, right, that's how it started. That's how it started. Right. He want, you wanted to do a movie based on get this, my face stepped on. This guy that was that, no, 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 I no, think I'm you done. wanted to. Oh, you right? Okay, I get it. Then. So you wanted to be the guy doing the fucked up shit to people. Right, right. Because I because those were all great stories. That's a great concept for a movie, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, so we came up with taking. Yeah. Team. So then, then, then I said, let's turn it around so that certain things are being done to you. Right that your wife doesn't know about it, and then the flip side is you don't know that, you know, because she's kind of left out in the cold all the time, she's actually turning tricks. Right, as well. And you don't know about her, you know, And that's And I gotta be honest, that one, that was our first, we was a short, and that yeah. won the New York Underground Film Festival. Yeah. Actually, Anthony, my friend, my good friend Anthony uh, Trace, he said that uh, you recently put it on Facebook? Or, or you did. No, no. Just you too. recently. <laughs> no, you did, and I put it on Facebook. Oh, wait, wait. No, you're right. You're right, dude. I put it on Facebook. Right, right. You put it on, right, right. You put it on, on YouTube. No, no. You put it on YouTube, <clears throat> and I found you, it. You said I was the right spider. Right. And then I put it on Facebook. Right. You're right. right. I right. did. That's what he, he goes. Steve just posted Dick and Jane. I was like, all right, that's. Yeah, good. no, I, I didn't know you. And put then it on. they're like, it was. Isn't that the Jim Carrey movie? And I'm like, no, that's that's fun with Dick and. Right. Jane. This is just Dick, Dick and Jane. Jane. Right. And then we did the second thing we did was because of you. Because of you. Where another, I had another idea. They're all dark stories. They're all dark, and my daughter has cancer. Right. And I'm a degenerate gambler. Right. That's and right. I end up killing myself. It was a comedy, you like comedy. It was a, yeah, it was a, it was a light comedy, right. He, he winds up killing him. He winds up killing him. You, know, you wonder what goes on in my head. I wrote this stuff, too. It's a light comedy. No, really, I'm a normal guy. Um, so he winds up killing himself, to, and it makes it look like someone murdered him. So his wife would get the money, so that the kid could, you know, continue to have uh, the medical attention that she's, she right. she needs to uh, survive. Right. So that was great. And again, that got accepted to a lot of festivals. That was also a very interesting. Uh, that was a that was one of my favorites. Yeah, no, that was good. That's good. That's good. But uh, but yeah, so we're gonna take a two minute break, okay. and we we'll come back and we're gonna talk about your time on The Sopranos, uh, your famous killing. Maybe get some dirt on uh, on the cast. I'll give you some dirt on you know on my stuff. On your stuff, and maybe we'll talk about it. You know, getting the Feeney and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back in two minutes, two seconds. We're in the live with Steve Daniels. We'll be right back. Get 
packed house tonight. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is great, you know. I'm, we have I'm, a pretty audience. I'm glad I came out tonight, Steve. Yes. We think you, you missed the DJ. I have a DJ coming next week. Yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But before we go any further about The Sopranos, I just want to go forward and I want the audience out there in the TV land to check out the clip. We're going to check out the clip of when you get whacked. When I get whacked, yeah. All due respect, he's a great guy, Doc, but boss material. Important things, we all work together. Whoever winds up in the driver's seat. Phil, though, I'll never get it. The man was my mentor, who's right there for the take. It's hard, Jerry. What's he gonna do? That's my point, though, what you just said. Johnny goes away, it's Phil's turn in the driver's seat, and his heart gives out. Right, his heart. I know. What? It's a metaphor. He lost his balls, is what I'm saying. Just say it then. Well, fucking Whitman over here. Okay. Ladies. Hey. You all right? How you doing? Should we get some more wine? It's fucking waiter on sabbatical. What's the name of the Sangiovese? We had a Quattro Gatti. Uh, the night you. A fast motion clip. That looked great, man. You like that? Yeah. That, that was actually pretty intense. I, like I was fine. I was nervous for you. Great. I was actually reliving so, that whole thing. So, <laughs> before we get, you know, go any further into that scene, let's talk about the whole process of getting on The Sopranos and when, and what that entailed and uh, how that whole process went. That was a painful process, actually. Do tell. Um, well, I guess long story short, um, I, I read for the show probably ten times actually before I actually uh, booked the role. And um, it was probably after like the sixth or seventh time that I told my manager, I said, listen, you know, I'm not getting on the show, you know, so I just, I think they just don't like me something, you know, so I, I didn't want to go back, you know. And she said, no, just stick it out, they wouldn't keep calling you back. And, um, and even the casting agent, um, Georgiana Walken, right. who's really tough on people. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've heard her just rip people apart. People came out of the casting room just, you know, like numb looking. So, and she said to me several times, you know, um, I, you know, I just, I don't know why they haven't put you on. I just call her. Call. We need that red light out there saying filming. Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. I hope you're rolling this. This yeah. is great. That's great. So, uh, oh, we, we, we need the. Uh, now you're, you're coming in now. Coming in. So, so uh, are you settled? Is everybody settled in? <laughs> take, your, take your coats off. Stay a while. You want to get comfortable? You want to go pee? <laughs> Would anybody like to join me on the couch here? Is it me? Not you! <laughs> so, uh... Is it co-guest or something? So tell us about... Uh, <laughs> tell us about the, the whole Sopranos. Um, your whole process of being on Soprano. So, um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, you know, I, I thought that after about six or seven times, um, they just didn't like me. And uh, as I was talking about Georgiana walking, um, you know, she even said to me at one point, <laughs> I swear that wasn't me. Did I, did I mention to you that we're going to have a DJ next week? <laughs> I mean, that sounded, you know, I was on a cruise last week and it sounded like we were just leaving. I just had a flashback of swimming with the dolphins so, or something. So, so, so going back to the whole surprise. So, Georgiana Walk. Georgiana Walk, we've heard her. She's, she's, she's cr crazy, but so she's, she's like, listen, John, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't know why they haven't gone with you on anything yet. Right. So at that point, I said to my manager, I said, listen, you know, maybe they just don't like me. And she's like, no, no, they wouldn't keep calling you back. So anyway, the 10th time, I finally get up there, and I, and I get a call back again, and I read for uh, 
a character of, I forget the guy's name, but he's, he's the guy with the glasses. Right. Um, when I left, uh, as I'm driving home, my phone rings, and she's like, you booked it. She's like, but not the part, the guy with the glasses, another part, Jerry Torciano. So, which another guy read for, and then they wound up swapping, right. you know, he got the role of, uh, of that guy, and I got the Jerry Torciano role. So, I, you know, I was like, that was awesome, you know. So, I get to the first table read, and um, I said to Terrence Winter, I said, Terrence, I gotta, I mean, I have to ask you this question. Right. You know, ten times I've been up here, you know, I didn't want to come back. I said, what, what was the deal? He's like, John, listen, he goes, if we didn't like you, we wouldn't have wanted to keep seeing you. He said, so um, we did like you, but we just were waiting for that perfect role that we thought you were exactly right for. And I said, listen, you know, and he said, we thought you were, you know, a very good actor and we wanted you on the show. Like I said, it was just a matter of time. So that's how I got it. And then... Uh, now they had you blonde, right? Now they had me, yeah, this was David Chase's idea and I didn't know about this. You, know, like, you, know, I, you know, I thought I was going to be wearing a wig. I got to be honest with you. I, look, I, I can see with a lot of different hairstyles, blonde is not one of them. Yeah, things. I'm like, come on, you know, I'm, I'm Sicilian, you know, I'm going to be having blonde hair. And he, he wanted this whole, like, surfer California gangster. And, uh, again, David Chase is just, I mean, he's out there. He's a brilliant guy and all, um, but he does these crazy weird things. So, so how is, how, like, is, now, obviously, another funny story is I auditioned for The Sopranos. And I actually got a role, but not as intense as yours, or as, as extensive as yours, but... My first day, yes, I remember, I remember seeing you. Yeah, and you I was, all dappered up. Yeah, we, we broke for lunch, and yes. uh, and I, I, I said, was that Steve Savage? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say Steve Savage. You didn't say Savage, right. I said, said, that, Savage. That's, I, said that, I said, I thought I was seeing That's things, the fucking you know, stripper, dude. At, that's the fucking yeah. stripper, dude. That's fucking... I said, we're down at Silver Cup Studios, and I just saw Steve walking, and then he, he's like, oh, John, you know, yeah. and I had on this, you know, black suit with uh, you know the white collars right. the cuffs and all that and stuff and um, it was so, it was a great it was a yeah, great it was a lot of fun. but so who's i mean well again. here's the thing though Let, now the thing with this and nobody knows about this is so i finally get on the show and after the second episode while i'm waiting for the table read to get in for the second episode um Pretty much this guy comes over to me and he sits down next to me and he's like, oh, I'm excited, you know, I finally got to get on the show. I get to kill this guy, Jerry. Is that how you figured out you were getting killed? The first time, yeah. And I look at him, I'm like, does that say Jerry Torciano? And he's like, yeah. He goes, don't tell me you're Jerry Torciano. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Jerry Torciano. And I, so I didn't know about it. So I was pissed. So now here I am getting killed on the second episode after it took me three years to get on the show. And I called my manager. I, was, I went into the table read and I was like completely pissed. And I was, you know, whatever, you know. And she's like, just listen, John, you got on the show. Anyway, long story short, we shot the whole scene. I get killed. Four weeks later, she gets a call. They're deleting. They're not going to show that. He wants to keep you on as a recurring character. And then I had gone on to uh, do the, the last two seasons. I did ten episodes and complete. So now, getting off off topic with that, I mean, I, I can I can answer some of those questions myself. But for, sort of crowd out there, all our viewers in the you know that watch in TV land, what is it, fifty, sixty thousand? Um, <laughs> tell them about who like who you dad. <laughs> Tell them about what? <laughs> Spin it out. That man has like my poor Johnny Walker. Have another drink. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Tell, Tell him basically. Tell them about what? <laughs> <laughs> the cast. Who in the cast is like, you know, you know, you know like Mike, Michael Imperioli. Michael great Imperioli. guy, yeah, super great. quiet, a little weird. Well, nice guy. He's just a little. He's but a little people laid back. don't know that. No, that's what I'm saying. You who, know, he people, who? he's a great actor. No, he's a great actor. No, no. Saying, what I'm saying is, you wouldn't think that he's a quiet, no, you know, right. guy. So who surprised you the most? Backs is probably, James Gandolfini. Was it Michael Imperioli? Yeah, probably Michael Michael Imperioli because he's so laid back and quiet, and he he's doesn't. Almost say, eccentric. Yeah, he doesn't say anything to anybody, and yet he could. You know, pour it on when he needs to pour it on. Right, but really um, laid back guy. Yeah, so he's he's pretty much. I mean, everybody else is 
pretty much what you see is what you get. I mean, like I you know, Frank Vincent, Frank who I was his right hand man. I mean, Frank brings to the table. He's Frank. He's Frank, but he's not acting. He's right. Frank being Frank. Um, Tony Sirico, you guys. know, I mean, right. Paulie I mean, Walnuts. Listen, I'm from Brooklyn. They're all Brooklyn guys. Right. Um, so they bring that. And, and Gandolfini, he's such a talented actor. And he really, he's not only, he's very giving also. Mm. Like when you're in a scene with him, he wants you to shine. He's not going to try to, you know, out. I'll out tell you again. So you stuff, so. With me, and again, I have to go back and forth, only because I want to go by my experience. I was on the last scene of the la of the day. Yeah, he was probably And it was like 16 hours, and he was fucking pissed. Yeah, so he doesn't want to be bothered. He don't want to be bothered. So I'm right. like, hey, nice to meet you, Jim. Right. He was just like, give me a dirty look. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's done. I went to do this scene with him. He, he was pissed. He was getting pissed because they kept cutting. And right. He just wanted to get the fuck out of there. So. Right. My experience with Gandafini was a lot different. Yeah. No, he, Plus, he, he didn't really know me. You know, right. He goes, you Steve Savage, right? Do <laughs> do. <laughs> 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 no, he's he's great, man. He, um, yeah, no, he's, like I said, you know, anybody at the end of the day, you know, uh, and at that point, that I think that was the last season. Right. He was getting tired of doing the show. Yeah. You know, he was just like, I, I need to move on, you know. I'm just, right. you know, because as an actor, I mean, as actors, uh, you know, You'd want to be working, and you'd love to have a steady gig like that. But at the same time, you know, well, you, know you want to play different characters. Well, you want true, to play different things. You know, that's it's just human nature. I'm sure Derek Jeter wakes up and is like, "Fuck, I got to drive to Yankee Stadium again, fight traffic, hit balls." I mean, everybody just he gets complacent. Yeah, I mean, I guess with actors, it's a little, it's a little crazy because you know, we, I mean, basically, uh, we, I, you know. We want to be kids. We want to play make believe. You no, know, I know, lives. but I'm just saying it's, it's it's human nature. I mean, whatever you're in, no matter how yeah, good, right. you worried about the next. And thing. it's a blessing, you know. If you're a working actor, it's it's the hardest thing in the world. You know, it's uh, you know, just to be working, it's it's a great thing. So, I, you know, I was blessed to be part of that amazing show for two seasons, and I, you know, I thank my lucky stars for that. And, now, uh, let's talk about real quick. Um, you probably have one of the top two, I would say. Whack scenes, which we just saw, you know. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, that, that, uh, we shot that. That took about 15 or 16 hours to shoot. And actually, um, we broke it. The, the part where my head actually goes into the plate right. was shot on another day in the studio. Right. So I still kind of had hopes. Like, I'm like, wow, they didn't put the last bullet in my head, so maybe I'm not really right, going right, to be killed. Right. So you like for, the, for the two weeks that, you know, we didn't shoot that scene, I was like, Maybe there is still hope, you know. Maybe David Chase will, because he's capable of anything, and it would happen once before. So right. I was like, you know, but I knew it was the last season of the show. So um, it was a whack. It denial? was great. I mean, I had four different suits, right. and they were all squibbed up. Right. And um, across from me, Stevie Van Sant, who was another great guy. Mm. I loved working with Stevie. Very friendly, nice guy. And he's sitting across the table from me. He's like, John, you do realize uh, those squibs are going to be blowing up toward me. He goes, so if you can, try not to, you know, aim them right at me. I said, Steve, I'm taking everybody down at the fucking table with me. That's funny. Yeah. I said, if I'm going, everybody's getting fucked up here. And, uh, he's like, John, I'm telling you, man, don't, don't do it. So, uh, you know, and it, and it hurt. You know, I cut my hand open falling down at one point um, because the squibs do hurt. You know, they're like little firecrackers on you. And then you have to time all of that right, you know. Right. So uh, even though you have several cameras set up on you, um, you know, I couldn't see the guy, so they're making the popping, you know, they're making the sounds of the gun going off, because again, the gun wasn't actually being shot. Right. I'd have to watch, somewhat watch the stunt man going, okay, it's going to be like one, two, three, four. And, you know, if you hear the sound, and then I go like this, or if I go like that before the sound, it just, you know, fucks up everything. And they had four suits, so he's got, you got four shots to get this perfect. Right. And, uh... You know, I mean, everybody was pretty happy with it. I was pretty happy yeah, with no, it. Yeah, no, I mean, that's one of the biggest... The My biggest mother was a little YouTube. disturbed. She's like, I really thought you were getting killed. I had to call you up to make sure yeah, you were yeah, okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> so my, my line is, you know, now, you know, I look pretty good for a dead guy, so... But uh, it was, it was like I said... Would you was, ever die a hair blonde it, again? It was an experience. No, absolutely not. not that we'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. He's going to hang out one more. We have one more segment. <laughs> Life up with Steve 
with a huge, beautiful crowd tonight, man. You talking to me? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I'll tell you what, though. I'm happy for the people that did come out with I'm the weather. I'm happy with the weather. The snow. Yep. It's supposed to snow afterwards. Give yourselves a round of applause. That's right. Round of applause. Yeah. We actually, we actually uh, you know, Vic Coluccio. Vic Coluccio. Who's the writer of Summer Sam. lives in, in uh, who's supposed to be on tonight. He lives in Pennsylvania, and yeah. he gets stuck out yeah. there. So, you know. <laughs> it would have been so. great. No, he'll be back. He, he gave me some back. props, too. He did. Yeah, he did. He did. Very so nice we've talked day. about our days at Chippendales. Yeah. We talked about Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten. We've talked about Sopranos getting whacked. And now we nice have paper. a project we're working on together right now. Yeah. Called Long Shot Louie. Long Shot Louie. So I just want you to tell everybody what Long Shot Louie is about. <clears throat> well, I mean, you came to me with, uh, with the idea of... Uh, this is something I think that you wanted to do years ago. I did, when I was uh, fucking about five years younger. But that's Something okay. that was just regarding, because we were in the whole dancing world and we know it inside out. Um, I know you wanted to do something like that. So, uh, you know, as I, I like to mold things and change things around, and that's what I do. What I so. wanted was The Wrestler meets Boogie Nights. No, was, that's what I gave you. <laughs> well, maybe I wanted The Wrestler Don't meets. steal my line, Steve. Wait a minute. Then That's I wanted, I wanted, I want Raging Bull in a G string. Thank you. He Raging Bull in a G string. Was what he I said. wanted Raging Bull in a G string. I wanted Raging Bull in a G string. And I said it was kind of more like, you know, the rest. Boogie Nights meets the rest. Yeah. And it's 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 in that world, you know. Right. Um, I always like to say it's a, you know, a forty-something-year-old ex Chippendale dancer. What do you mean forty-something? Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean 40 something years old? 40 so I'll make you 37. A 37 year old something All right. dancer All right, that's right. strung out and uh, he's had a hard life. Um, and then uh, what, I did, what I wanted to incorporate was why he was, why he is the way he is. Right. And that stems from childhood. Right. So um, I decided to give him the past of being abused by his father. Mm -hmm. uh, his father also abused his mother physically. Right. And, uh, you know, I got to play the, uh, the father, yes. Frank, Frank Lazaro. Um, and so it flashes back to the late 80s, early 90s uh, to show the beatings and, and the stuff that he went through and why he turned to drugs and alcohol and why he became the person he became. And throughout that uh, turmoil, he uh, stayed with his high school sweetheart, Alina. Right. right. And uh, they had this you know, uh, crazy relationship on and off. Um, she was kind of like always trying to ground him and um, and she stayed with him throughout right. all his trials and tribulations. Um, and then it brings you into today, 2013, uh, and it just kind of takes you on this journey uh, of his life and, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's a dark story. You know, it, we're drawn to dark stories. Well, everything we do is dark. It's yeah, but I mean, that's it's like real life stuff. So it just, you know, not only do I like to entertain people with the films that you know I make and we make, um, but I like to touch people in a way that they could relate to the characters on screen, and either with either through themselves or they may know somebody like my uncle's like that, my ex boyfriend's right. like that. You know, I know a person like that, and it just. It draws you in. Well, and the, and the cool thing about this film, um, again, first of all, it's one of it's favorite, my favorite thing I've ever done. Mine too. And uh, <coughs> we just got accepted to Soho at the National Film Festival, which is awesome. We'll be screening there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But, um, but, um, Steve but Savage and Johnny Ron. Steve Rutt. Savage and Johnny Ron, right. <laughs> right. If you told me 20 years ago, I used to be walking around. Who would have thunk it? I know. But, uh, but the whole thing is, it's, it, it's a great story, and it's a real New York story. Yeah, it's a real New York and, story. And I like the fact, without giving away the end, yeah, don't give that it does, no, no, I know, that it, it doesn't end, I don't want to say happily, it, it's not a, your typical Hollywood ending. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, listen, I love Hollywood films, uh, but you want to still have that grittiness of that independent feel, because that's, that's what people gravitate to, because it's... It's more realistic. It's more for the uh, your everyday man or your everyday person that right. could relate to that type of character. Right. Um, and those are the type of characters that I like to write about. Sure. You know, just real people. Um, and I can't say enough about the amazing acting that we had in the film. Well, thank you. I mean, I really put. Oh, you mean the rest of the cast? <laughs> you mean the rest of the cast? Well, yeah, and you were okay too, Steve. But, uh, no, no, no. But yeah, everybody. No. I mean, you included. Everybody did an amazing yeah, job. Right. Um, you just, I mean, there isn't a moment that I didn't believe, you know, and I've, 
you know, I'm editing it. Uh, I'm still tweaking things, but uh, you know, watching it, I could watch it and be totally absorbed into the story and um, not be like, oh, you know, I just, you know, there's always second choices and second things and that you hate as, as a filmmaker, you know. But uh, it's like I, like you said, said, you know, it's it's definitely it's it's a good film. It's the best thing I think I've done, and and uh, you know, you yeah, as well, I agree. So. I definitely agree. So yeah, and again, I, I you know. I'm curious to see the feedback at Soho. Yeah. And uh, hopefully with this motherfucker sold. Yeah, that's the goal, man. <laughs> so we could do all this stuff, but uh, let's get it sold. Well, that's right. Let's get it paid. It's time to get a payday, right? Pay the rent, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's get up for Mr. Johnson. Yeah!